Hey there folks and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to introduce a really cool concept, differentiability. You may have already read a bit about this in the textbook in section 11.4. It turns out that differentiability is quite a deep topic. There's lots to be said, but in Math 207, we're just going to scratch the surface. This is going to be our one and only video lesson. I'm going to tell you a bit about the basics of differentiability, and then we're going to continue on to our discussion about the chain rule. So let me first remind you what it meant for a function in calculus 1 to be differentiable. We said that a function f from r to r, takes in one input and spits out one output, was differentiable at some point x equals a if you could calculate its derivative, if f prime a existed. What this means informally is that the graph of our function at x equals a is very nice and smooth, right? We don't have any sharp cusps, we don't have any breaks, it's a nice smooth curve, right? We can calculate a derivative there. Now back in Calc 1, this property was super important because if your function had the luxury of being differentiable at x equals a, then it means the function could be approximated by its tangent line near x equals a, right? If we can calculate a derivative, we can draw this tangent line at x equals a, and this is a very close approximation to the function. If you zoom in really, really close around x equals a, the function and the tangent line will be essentially indistinguishable. The other nice thing that comes from differentiability is continuity. If you happen to know that your function is differentiable, then it's automatically continuous, right? We don't have any breaks in the function. The converse is not true, however. You can have a continuous function, like for example, the absolute value function, that lacks the property of differentiability. At x equals zero, the function has a cusp. So it's not differentiable there, but it is continuous. Suppose now that we have a function from Math 207, a function with multiple inputs. What should it mean for this function to be differentiable at some point a, b? Well, if the definition before was that the derivative existed, maybe a good definition in our course is that the partial derivatives exist. Suppose for just a second that we do take this as our definition for differentiable. Would it mean that we get the same nice consequences that we know back in Calc 1? Could our function be nicely approximated by a tangent plane near the point AB? Does it mean that our function is continuous at AB? Remarkably, the answer to both of these questions is no. The existence of partial derivatives does not guarantee that either of these properties will hold for a multivariable function. And I can actually give you a concrete counterexample, something that you worked with on your most recent assignment. Okay, folks, the proposed definition for a multivariable function to be differentiable at a point is simply that its partial derivatives exist at that point. Here, I'm going to show you that that definition really isn't very good because both of our consequences of differentiability from calculus 1 suddenly fail. Take, for example, this function, f of x, y shown here. You actually worked with this function back on assignment 2, question 2. There, you use the limit definition of the partial derivatives to show that both of its partial derivatives exist at the origin and are equal to zero. You can actually see that this is the case by looking at the graph of the function. If you start at the origin and move in the x or y directions, the function doesn't have a tendency to increase, right? It's completely flat in those directions. So both partial derivatives are zero. And according to our proposed definition, this function would be differentiable at the origin. Does this mean that we can nicely approximate our function using a tangent plane? Well, no. You can certainly find the equation of the tangent plane. It would simply be L of x, y equals 1 in this case. But that tangent plane is a horrible approximation for the function. Take a look at the picture I have here. It's a good approximation in the x and y directions, but if we move in other directions, the tangent plane doesn't model the behavior of our function at all. If we were to zoom in to the origin, the tangent plane would not be getting closer to the graph of our function. It's a bad approximation. You also showed on your assignment that this function is not continuous at the origin. After all, if we approach the origin along the line y equals 0, it looks like our function is approaching a value of 1. If instead we approach the origin along this line, the line y equals x, then it looks like our function is approaching a value of 0. Therefore, the limit doesn't exist, and our function is not continuous. Well, it's time to face the facts, folks. We have cold, hard evidence that this definition of differentiable is not a good one. It would mean that a differentiable function in Calc 3 
behaves very differently than a differentiable function in Calc 1, and that's not what we want. The problem here is that the partial derivatives give us really limited information. They tell us about how our function behaves as we move with the x or y axis, but not about how our function behaves as we move in other directions. So this definition involving partial derivatives is not going to be our definition of differentiable. On the next slide, I'm going to tell you the true definition of differentiability for multivariable functions. The partial derivatives tell us only about the behavior of our function in the x or y directions, and this is no good when talking about differentiability. We need a definition that accounts for our function's behavior in all directions. So informally, this is sort of what we're going for. We're going to say that our function is differentiable at some point a, b, if its tangent plane, l of x, y, closely approximates the values of the function nearby. So take this function, for example. At the point a, b, you can see that the tangent plane is very close to the graph of our function. If you zoom in really, really, really close to that point, the surface will look almost flat. It will look plane-like. Our function is therefore really nice and well-behaved in all directions, and this is what it will mean to be differentiable at the point a, b. Okay, now here's the formal definition. We want a function that's defined at all points around a, b. So we'll insist that f is defined in a disk containing a, b. And since we want to be able to talk about its tangent plane, we need its two partial derivatives to exist. That's the setup. Formally, we're going to say that such a function is differentiable at a point a, b if this limit is equal to zero. Okay, now what is this scary looking limit? Well, in the numerator, we have the absolute value of f of x, y minus l of x, y. What this is measuring is the distance between our function and the tangent plane. In the denominator, we have the distance between x, y and a, b. So if this limit is going to zero, what it's saying is that the distance between our function and our tangent plane is going to zero faster than the distance between our point x, y and the target point a, b. So as we get closer and closer to a, b, the tangent plane is really becoming a better and better approximation to the values of our function. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, Zach, do I really have to use this definition in practice? The good news here is no. It's important that you're able to recognize this as the definition of differentiable, but using this limit in practice is kind of hard and a bit beyond the scope of our course. So instead, I'm going to show you two consequences of this definition that we are going to use in practice to verify differentiability. Okay, folks, here's a cool and beautiful theorem that gives us a sufficient condition for a function to be differentiable at some point a, b. We know that it's not enough for the function's partial derivatives to exist at a, b, right? But it turns out that if they exist at all points nearby and are continuous at a, b, then your function really will be differentiable at a, b. Now this condition is a lot nicer to work with than that gross limit from the last slide. But the downside here is it's a one-directional implication. If this condition is satisfied, then your function is differentiable. It doesn't say that every differentiable function must satisfy these conditions. Let's check out an example. Consider this function, f of x, y equals 1 over x squared plus y squared. We want to show that it's differentiable at the origin. So what we're going to do is compute its two partial derivatives. I guess we could use the quotient rule here, but I'm actually going to rewrite this as x squared plus y squared plus 1 to the power of minus 1. This will allow me to instead use the chain rule. We find that the partial derivative with respect to x is, well, the derivative of the inside, that's 2x, and then we take the derivative of the outside and leave the inside alone. That gives us minus x squared plus y squared plus 1 to the minus 2 which we could write as minus 2x over x squared plus y squared plus 1 squared. And similarly, the partial derivative with respect to y is going to be minus 2y over x squared plus y squared plus 1 all squared. Now notice that both of these partial derivatives exist at all points near the origin. They're also continuous there, right? They're nice rational functions involving x and y. So they exist near the origin, they are continuous at the origin, we therefore conclude that our function f is differentiable at the origin. That's pretty nice, huh? 
On the next slide, I'm going to show you one more consequence of our definition that will allow us to prove that a function is not differentiable. It turns out that our crazy limit definition of differentiability gives us the same connection to continuity that we knew back in Calc 1. Specifically, we can show that if our function is differentiable at a point, it must also be continuous at that point. Said a little differently, if the function is not continuous at that point, then it's not differentiable at that point. And this is pretty cool because it gives us a way to show that a function is not differentiable. We simply show that it's not continuous. This won't always work. There are continuous functions that are not differentiable, but when it does work, it's a lot better than using that limit definition. So for example, let's try to show that this gross function, f of x, y, is not differentiable at the origin. To do this, we're first going to look at continuity. Is the function continuous at the origin? We'll check this by looking at its behavior along various paths to 0, 0. Let's take, for example, the line x equals 0. If we follow this path to the origin, then we're computing the limit as 0, y goes to 0, 0 of, well, 0 plus y squared divided by 0 squared plus y squared. Ah, but this is exactly 1, right? Our limit is 1 in this case. And right away, I can see that it's not going to be equal to the value of my function at the origin. So I don't know if the limit exists or not, but in any case, the limit as x, y approaches the origin is not going to be equal to f of 0, 0, which is what it means for the function to be continuous. So we conclude that our function is not continuous at the origin, and therefore it's not differentiable there. Pretty cool, huh? Let's end this video with a quick summary of all the connections we've just developed. In this video, we've explored many properties relating to differentiability, and here we're going to summarize the connections. The strongest property is this one, that the partial derivatives exist near AB and are continuous at AB. If this condition holds, then yeah, your partial derivatives will both exist, but even more importantly, your function will be differentiable at AB. It can be closely approximated by its tangent plane. This also means that our function will be continuous at AB, right? Differentiability implies continuity, just like in Calc 1. Finally, it's built into our definition of differentiable that both partial derivatives exist at AB. So we also have an arrow moving to the left. 